Hey guys. So today I wanted to do a little video about maybe stick welding because I feel like it's the first process people get started on when they get into welding. And I talk about like getting into welding, maybe some things that I've done, but I've never really actually did anything about actual welding. So we're gonna do that today. Um, so this is gonna be strictly on stick welding, just shielded metal art welding 101, some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years that maybe will help you when you first get started in welding too, on stick welding too. So if you wanna learn more about it, keep watching. Some things you may need, a wire brush, some sort of chipping hammer or something that can chip slag off, a welding jacket, gloves, uh, some sort of helmet, doesn't have to be anything that fancy, a welding machine, uh, yeah, I work for Miller, so of course I have this luxury of like having all this equipment, but that doesn't matter. Whatever machine you can get your hands on, get it. Next, some of you will not have to worry about this, but um, you have your stick electrodes. Proper term is stick electrodes, also known as rods or just stick, okay? I personally, I have my low hydrogen rods kept in an oven, which is what you're supposed to do. Um, low hydrogen rods, I'm not gonna like really get into that, but um, basically not all the rods go in the oven. And we're looking at this number here. So this is a 7018 rod. I've got 7014, 6013, and 6011s down here. Just for a two let me sit those down. 6011 rods, let's see. 6011 rods. This is also known as your foam rod. Basically, this will weld literally anything over paint, rust, all that good stuff. It's a good all-purpose rod. Um, so, yeah, 6011, that is your 7018, is uh, most commonly used. It is a low hydrogen rod. It's good all purpose. It runs really, really smooth. Um, and it's really easy to learn with. Um, so that's the rods I'm gonna use. Stick electrodes actually is what I should say is proper. Um, then we have my work clamp here. I've already had it set up. I just threw my electrode holder, AKA stinger. The electrode holder is the proper term. Now that I'm dressed, and I have some metal here, AKA weld coupons, though I don't know why they use the word coupons. Honestly, I don't know, but they're called coupons, but anyways. So what I'm gonna do next, I have my 7018 electrode here. Then I am going to place it in my electrode holder. All right, um, you can do this many different ways. You can put it straight in. There's a little grooves where you put it at an angle. You can also put it through the top. Um, you can actually bend this wire, or bend this wire, bend this rod over. I know a lot of people that do that too. Um, but if you had a college instructor like me, uh, he would have kicked you out of class for doing that. So probably wouldn't suggest that. So first things first, when it comes to an electrode starting the arc, is the hardest part to learn actually when stick welding. So typically you're gonna do a scratch technique, like a match. Um, some people will like tap, um, but to me that's a little bit more harder to do. So I use the scratch technique, all right? Now that we've got it tapped, um, I'm still gonna use this rod. So basically, um, this is a flux coating on the outside of it, right? So it will not strike an arc with the flux being over the actual metal on the inside. So you can see here like at the end, that's the metal on the inside. So kind of like a pencil, um, you have the wood on the outside and then you have the actual lead on the inside. Same concept here. So what we gotta do, we've gotta break that flux off. Okay, a lot of times you'll see people take this out, start hitting it on the table, hit it on the ground, 
whatever. Um, you can just read your fingers over it in this case. All right, so first things first too, our technique is we're going to drag. So what this means, I'm dragging it this way, all right? This would be pushing, we're gonna be dragging, all right? We do that because when there's slag, you drag, and we don't want slag entrapment, which is basically when this flux on the outside here gets inside of our weld, and then it causes, um, let's say, for lack of a better word, um, defects. So things that we might not see, it could cause the weld to crack later on, things like that. And of course, we don't want that. So I'm going to just weld um, a pass here. So this position is a horizontal, and I'm going to be welding a fillet weld. A fillet weld is anything at a 90 degree angle, okay? That's what a fillet weld is. All right, let us begin. So another key to stick welding, that is really hot. Um, while you're welding, you're gonna have to continuously be pressing down. So while you're welding, this is getting burnt up because it's forming the weld. So you're gonna have to continuously push down. All right, continuously, all right. Um, then if you're, it starts getting like really bright on you or you still get lots of like spatter, which is like these little droplets that come off of it. That means you're too far away. That means you gotta get closer. However, if you're too close, um, then the rod will stick on you. And that's just equal to a very bad day. So don't get too close. The um, um, basic, um, what you want to do or rule of thumb to go by is you want to say however thick the rod is. When I say rod, I only mean the metal part, okay? So this is a 1 8 rod. Even though it's thicker than one eighth of an inch, this piece of metal here is only one eighth. So you want to stay above your base material at least an eighth, okay? That's where you want to stay. So, this is what our weld currently looks like, and this is very hot. Um, I'm actually just going to bring this closer so you can see it. So this is with the slag on top of it. This is not the actual weld, what it looks like. This is before, okay. So what I'm going to do is use my chipping hammer and take this out. product looks like okay nice and smooth very uniform all that good stuff that's what we're looking for all right let me fix this where you can see me so next that is horizontal which is pretty easy to do okay um, or it's might not be easy to do but it is easy to get mastered all right, now, vertical. Vertical means I'm going up with it now. I say, I'm going up with it now. <laughs> um, so that's where it gets a little tricky. So I'm also going to show you how to do that on the other side of this piece that I just welded. So you can see the form that I use. Um, something important when you do vertical is, let me adjust this down. So people, a lot of times when they weld vertical, 
Um, they will start here and then as they go up, they start changing their angle, okay? We don't wanna do that. As we go up, we want to move our arms and shoulders and stay the exact same angle all the way up. All right, if you start doing this, okay? When you do this, at this point, your puddle runs out on you, okay? So it's gonna start flubbing out and that's when you're gonna, gonna get all these little like, I'm not gonna say what people call them, but that's whenever it starts like having claws come out at you is just what I'm gonna say for this video purpose because it's normally called something else. <laughs> all right, same thing, putting my electrode here. Now this is just the way I do it. Um, I'm gonna make this a little bit higher. Now, there's different techniques that you can do um, this. Um, some people um, will put this at an angle at this point and then do like this. Um, that's just not very comfortable for me. So I put mine like this and then I hold my electro holder to the side. And then purposely, you're gonna want to get comfortable, all right? You have to be comfortable to make a good weld. Comfortable and confident. All right, so vertical, here we go. when you're doing vertical welds. It's not gonna look flat like it did horizontally. Okay, all right, so don't freak out. Try to set this where hopefully you can see. So that gets us through stick welding, just very basic stuff. Um, I hope that you find it a little bit beneficial. I don't know. I don't really know what to post sometimes, but um, something else I wanted to mention is get in the habit of doing straight stringer beads because if you start getting in a habit of making C's, um, half moons, cursive E's, um, I'm trying to think of like everything else people say. You do not want that dime effect when you're welding with a 7018 rod and it will also cause defects in your weld internally that you won't be able to see. So just don't, just don't get in the habit of that. I know people watch a lot of YouTube videos and they do that, um, but that is not something as a beginner you should get into. So just my two cents of advice. Well, I hope you enjoyed it and come back soon and I'll have another video hopefully. Bye.